Hello, world, and welcome to another edition of Wombo Stall! Ha 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 I'm Dan Brown. I'm your host. This is a show about Commander where I wear a witch's hat. I'm gonna get right into the email here. Hi, Dan. I have a Tiana Ship Caretaker EDH deck. I chose a Aura Prison style, not winning much and struggling to finish to my opponent's care drawing via card drawing, I think. Via Enchantress is slow, but in Boros, there is not much better choice. My finishers are stuffy plus guilty conscious. Uh, g- conscript plus twin. I think I think it's guilty conscience. Anyway, right, conscript plus twin. Tiana beat down and sigil beat down. Most of the prison aura works with Tiana, but it's not easily to protect your general. And prison aura attracts hate. Would like to see your take on Tiana. Thanks from Ham. Probably Ham. I don't know. Ham. I like Ham. That, that's better. Uh, so here's Tiana. She's a five mana legendary angel artificer. 3-3 body flying first strike. That's all the easy stuff. Then the uh, more complex is whenever an aura or equipment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of uh, the next end step. Interesting ability for her. It's a little bit narrow in that it's only auras, not just enchantments generally, which uh, you know ma- makes it a little hard to understand what Ham means by a prison-style deck because prison normally, I think, means stacks, like... Uh, enchantment and artifact based ways to uh, force all players to sacrifice permanence to kind of grind the game to a halt before it even starts at least at the most competitive tiers of commander and so auras don't do that as much equipment doesn't do that as much so it doesn't naturally synergize with Tiana might not be the colors you'd pick normally for prison but uh I guess that's what they're trying to make happen, uh, along with an aura strategy, an enchantress draw engine, stuffy doll combo, zealous conscripts combo, sigil of the empty throne beatdown, and Tiana beatdown. That's a lot of sub strategies for one commander deck. And in my experience, if you're, you know, one of the biggest reasons that decks underperform is because they're being pulled in way too many different directions, right? If you have kind of like five plans. If you draw synergy piece for plan A, one synergy piece for plan B, one synergy piece for plan D, all in the same hand, like they might be good if you have other synergy pieces for that same sub strategy, but if you just have one of each of five different strategies, often they're more or less dead cards in hand and your game never gets off the ground and then some opponent gets to an advantage that you can't just can't catch up with. So, you know, it's it's better I think to have like two mediocre plans than it is to have five good plans. That's uh, you know that's a lesson that I learned reading books about chess. Right, a bad plan is better than no plan. I think in Commander you can kind of you know scale that truism up to you know two bad plans are better than five good plans or something. I don't know. It doesn't. It's not an exact analog. We're just gonna move right along. So uh, and I. I did put together the deck list I'm about to show you, and then I sent it to Ham, and then Ham sent me back an email. You know, if you happen to do a video on Tiana, you must include a Dan Brown style Tiana and a prison style Tiana. I did not go with the prison strategy. Ultimately, uh, yeah, I I definitely do have um, a signature deck building style, and Ham has noticed that here. And I I. I I, I'm busy. Like I got a lot of things I'm trying to do. I, I got a lot of hustles I'm trying to to work on. And so I I, I started kind of looking at what a prison strategy deck might look like. But I, I you know I'm just gonna show you the Dan Brown style deck that I put together. But I also want to do right by Ham here. And so I want to crowdsource because I I've never played. I mean I, okay all right. The the whole reason I'm making Commander content more than anything else is because you know I want to engage with YouTube as a medium while also engaging deeper with this game that I love. And in, in engaging with this game deeper, it means I should be pushing myself right. I should go beyond my comfort zone. I should go beyond the Dan Brown style that is uh, you know my my oeuvre my oeuvre of uh, of Commander decks. And so okay I mean I I want to build a prison deck. But it's it's not gonna be this week. I need you guys to leave a comment below with like a cool wombo stormy nugget, nucleus of an idea for a prison deck that I can then spread my wings and and in encase it in my brain tendrils and witches bruise and make an amazing well, or at least begin to understand better what uh, prison style decks really feel like. And also so and so also to do right by ham, 
I need you guys to leave comments, guys and girls, to leave comments below and non-conforming. Uh, gender is a social construct is what I'm getting at. Anyway, uh, leave a comment below about how you think that a Tiana deck might also uh, utilize a prison strategy effectively to help ham out. Uh, <laughs> and, all right, anyway, so but, but for my deck, for my deck, what I wound up going with out of the sub-strategies that were listed, you know, auras, Enchantress draw engine, kind of. It's, it, there's not. There's only one Enchantress that really works with. Uh, well, I'll get there. Zealous conscripts combo and Tiana beatdown. I ax the prison strategy. I ax the sigil of the empty throne. I ax the stuffy doll combo. Not because those are bad plans. Those are perfectly good plans. They just are too many plans. And I wanted to. I just wanted to focus the deck more. Focus. Focusing the decks. Is, uh, that's the name of the game. Here it is. Tiana Zealot is what I'm calling the deck. There's Tiana, and there is that's Zealous Conscripts. It's a silhouette of Zealous Conscripts. Just barely poking. It's a thumbnail for the video. And uh, this is the... This, all right. So, all right. Here, Zealous Conscripts, the combo, uh, pretty standard for Commander. If you've been playing for a long time at any like remotely high competitive tier that's like okay with combos, you've probably seen something like this. It's a great way to win in a red deck. It's also a former modern deck. Uh, the splinter twin combo, but the, the splinter twin got banned as of right now. It still is. Who knows? I'm not an expert on other formats, but yeah, the way that it works is Zealous Conscripts enters the battlefield. You get a trigger to untap a permanent and gain control of it. That last little bit, gaining control, is not relevant for what we're doing here, though, because uh, you're either going to be targeting a creature enchanted with splinter twin or Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker both have the same ability of tap to put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of a creature. So you're going to copy the Zealous Conscripts then and then just make infinite copies of Zealous Conscripts by untapping whatever is copying this to get another trigger to untap it all over again. And Zealous Conscripts already has haste, so you just swing for infinite damage against all of your opponents the turn that you uh, get this online. Zealous Conscripts is a must, must, must have for this combo, and these are either or pieces to give you a little bit more flexibility uh, in case someone like exiles some cards out of your uh, library somehow. Uh, there's also an Elixir of Immortality in the deck just to give uh, us a little bit of reach in case the game goes long or some of our combo pieces wind up in the graveyard where, uh, you know, red-white doesn't have uh, the best tools for, uh, you know, getting those those pieces back. There are some, but... All right, next card. Uh, okay, the, the plan B. If we can't get the Zealous Conscripts combo online, plan B is just to give Tiana spicy breath to give her fire breathing with Scourge of the Nobilis and Dragon Mantle. Uh, both just, you know, good value auras. I love Dragon Mantle because it replaces itself as soon as it comes into play. You know, not quite as um, good of a plan as just comboing off, making infinite creatures and swing because they all have haste. But, uh, you know, if you can give her spicy breath, make a lot of red mana, swing in for, you know, big beats over time. Uh, it, it can work. You know, it's a backup plan. That's why it's a plan B. But, okay. Also, we have seven more value auras. I love Compassion Standard uh, for Tiana. I think I'm saying that right. Maybe I'm not. But uh, it is an aura that you can sacrifice to draw a card which would trigger Tiana to bring it right back and it only costs one mana uh, to recast it because Tiana, right, she, she, she puts it back in your hand, right? Am I crazy? Am I, have I, uh, uh, yeah, right, uh, hand. It's hand. It's not in, I mean, either way. Even if it brought back into play, that's even better, but that's not what she does. Felidar Umbra is, I mean, I just like totem armor that protects Tiana, you know, she takes lethal damage, but instead you just lose the Feldar Umbra and then you get the Feldar Umbra back anyway because of Tiana's ability. Pretty cool. Faith Unbroken, another good example here of just a way to get some extra value out of an aura that also pumps her and supports the beatdown strategy. And the beatdown strategy, it's, it's not exclusively a plan B, right? Putting pressure, keeping constant pressure on your opponents with like a good mid-range creature with maybe some extra buffs is a good way to keep them on their heels and make sure they're not too aggressively trying to reach their end game scenario. Instead, you're forcing them to play conservatively and you might just find an opening where their resources are tangled up and you can go for broke with an infinite combo. So the beatdown does play into that in, in, in a way. Like red, white, it doesn't have the highest number of like, control options to uh, you know, sit back, sit back, play a kind of combo control style deck. But in lieu of control, kind of playing aggressively in a weird way, in a multiplayer game, if, if you have a scary board, if the board generally is scary, then people tend to you know, sit back a little bit more and it's like control without control in a way. In a way. Uh, speaking of control, we have 19 effects that I call control effects. Many of them are just standard good stuff. Those are not the ones that I'm showing you right now. These ones are the more interesting ways to control things. Um, they're, they're auras, 
which synergize well with Tiana. I love the Vow cycle. I mean, there's one for each color, so we have access to this red one on the far left, uh, Vow of Lightning, and there's also um, a white one. But uh, they can either be control, or you can just put them on Tiana to give her a pretty solid pump. But, uh, you know, putting... Uh, preventing a scary creature that an opponent controls from attacking you in a way is better than removing it, right? A laser cannon that is not your laser cannon but is not pointed at you and is in, pointed at your opponents instead might as well be your laser cannon. A Vow of Lightning is a great way to ensure that. Uh, Moral Obstinacy is a, a super interesting card that uh, lets you sacrifice it to get some upside, you know, uh, destroying an enchantment. Uh, it could, you know, I, I, When it comes to removal effects, I... I I go back and forth on whether it's worth running, um, you know, dedicated enchantment removal or artifact removal without any other flexibility. Because sometimes, you know, the permanent that's a problem, the thing you have to deal with is not an enchantment or artifact. Go figure. You want something more general, like an anguished unmaking or an utter end. But obviously we're not in those colors. And the fact that it synergizes with Tiana's bring in tri bring auras back uh, ability, uh, you know, it's just it's it's. A card that does not fit into very many EDH decks at all, but this is one that uh, I think it does. Darksteel Mutation, another really great one. It just mutes uh, an opponent's commander. You know, turning a commander into a 0-1 buggy is not uh, the same thing as you know, changing zones for the commander, so they can't really do anything about it just being a useless insect. And then Choking Restraints, you know, uh, just another aura that you can sacrifice to uh, you know, some end and then it comes back you get that value it's a little slow i mean that's like eight mana to do one cycle of that but even just enchanting a creature and you know preventing it from attacking or blocking that is good on its own so you know the five mana ability is an upside 19 control effects the rest of them are just kind of generic good stuff there are 14 draw effects in the deck the mesa enchantress is really the only um remaining sign of the enchantress sub theme uh just because i wanted it to be uh i mean well White Red does not have that much Enchantress support, to be honest. I could have done, like, um, that Artificer dude. Uh, uh, SRAM! Yeah, SRAM. But I didn't. So, I don't know. Comment below. Is that a good idea? Bad idea? I don't know. Check out the full deck list. Rogue's Gloves. A uh, good way, you know, once you punch in with an evasive creature, draw some cards. And, you know, equipment are, are also brought back by Tiana. I chose not to go with the equipment sub-theme as much as the enchantment sub-theme just because... Um, the equip cost is the tempo loss, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. Uh, and sort of fire and ice. I mean, this is an expensive card, so obviously, if you don't have it in your collection already, you might not want to pick it up to put it into this deck. But it is just really good for drawing cards. Red, white, hard press for ways to draw cards, and these are all ways to do it that uh, also synergize with Tiana just a little bit. The other card draw effects I run in here are just like generic colorless good stuff draw effects, like you know, mind's eye, etc. Not you know, mana wise, the most efficient ways to draw cards, but they they are consistent draw engines that uh, turn after turn after turn continue to draw you more and more cards. And so, you know, ultimately can uh, make up for the mana that you sink into them. No deck should go without good card draw because there's never an excuse because there are good options in Colorless four tutors. They're all right here. Enlightened Tutor Gamble. Heliod's Pilgrim. Interesting. It's on a creature body. Searches up an aura. Just makes sense in an aura-based deck. Three dreams. Same situation. Searches for three different auras. Put them in your hand. Easy peasy. No problem. And then we have 11 ramp effects. 38 lands. The ramp effects are just like mana rocks. Pretty standard issue stuff. 38 lands. Pretty normal number. That's, uh... That's the deck. Leave a comment below with what you think. Uh, you can look at the full deck list. There's a tapped out link in the description. Uh, and email me, danbrownuniverse at gmail.com, about anything at all. Ways to manage. I mean, look at that. This hair is this hair situation. Hair and hat situation. Crazy. What's goldfish? Uh, shuffle, 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 shuffle. Draw our opening hand. Take a peek at this. What do we think? There are no mana rocks discernible. Uh, but we do have a Faithless Looting, that's this one right here, which might allow us to hit some pretty quickly. For I mean, we could do this turn one and then maybe hit a Mana Rock and then turn two, maybe drop a Mana I mean, it's, it's a risk. We have enough land stuff. See, this is it. We got four lands, which is fairly decent. I... Uh, I'm on the ball. I mean, we have two control effects too, which will kind of stall out the game to help us get to whatever point we're trying to get to. I... it's a, it's a, you know bubble call, but I'm going to say we keep it. We do our draw step. Return to dust. That is not a mana rock. That's what we're fishing for. I'm going to do the faithless looting thing. Draw, draw. Neither of those are mana rocks, although the day of judgment, like I was saying a minute ago, the best control effect yet that will help us um, reach a hopefully late game situation uh, because our opponents won't have been able to get there because we wiped all their creatures. Our discard, I guess Temple of the False God, um, and... Uh, 
uh, choking restraints is fine. Uh, turn two, untap, drop, three dreams. Okay, we'll play a planes and then we will pass through. We'll go to turn three, draw. We have a chaos warp. I will drop that mountain. Look at our graveyard here. The faithless looting costs three to flash back. We're drawing so many of our control effects. We do run a lot of them, so it's not the biggest surprise that maybe we don't. Well, I mean, it, it depends on how um, explosive a start our opponents are getting off to. So if they're getting off to a very explosive start, we probably just sit back on a Chaos Warp. On an, I mean, wait, we'd have to cast the Oblivion Ring now, I guess, but uh, Day of Judgment maybe next turn without doing a whole lot of anything. Although Faithless Looting would be useful then if that's the plan. Um, yeah, I, the more I think about it, like, unless our opponents are really getting off to a fast start and we want to hold up that Chaos Warp. I do think that the Faithless Looting is the best plan, Chaos Warp, allowing us to tuck any permanent into our uh, opponent's libraries. So yeah, let's let's say for three, go ahead and get that Faithless Looting back. Go ahead and move that to the Exile Pile. Draw, draw! Neither of them being Mana Rocks. Okay. And then, I mean, Chosen by Heliod is just a little bit underwhelming. It does replace itself, with help, which helps us like kind of get through the deck a little faster, hit our land drops, all that. And we have plenty of control effects. I mean, three dreams can be a blowout sort of a play. Can help us, uh, you know, get Splinter Twin, which can help us win the game. But mm, yeah, I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with Return to Dust. I'm gonna discard a Return to Dust. Maybe you disagree with that, but we're we're playing against a Goldfish. Who's to say what our opponents are doing? There's a Mana Rock. I like that Mana Rock. Go ahead and drop that Soul Ring, and that would be enough to drop Tiana. Or we could, you know what might be a better plan? Let's just say that our opponents have been uh, building a pretty big board. It's just time to reset. Let's just reset. All those little value creatures have got in play. The uh, first, like, mid rangey scary threat. Maybe they couldn't give us the political confirmation we were looking for when we were like, hey, are you going to swing at me? Maybe they hedged on that. Maybe we're like, okay, well, we'll just wipe the board instead. That's, that's what we're going with in this goldfishy game. Turn five, untapping, drawing a planes. Main phase, drop that planes. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana available to us, which would be enough to drop Tiana and the Chosen by Heliod, I guess. We did just wipe the board, which means that our opponents have probably been like rebuilding rather than actively threatening, so we could probably get away with something like that. Yeah, I'm gonna say one, two, three, four, five. There's a Tiana. And then we're gonna say for a one and a two. And drop a Chosen by Heliod. When it enters the battlefield, we draw a card. Oh, look, a Mana Rock. We've been uh, hoping for Mana Rocks, although we're getting past the point in the game where they're as relevant as they uh, often are. Although, real, honestly, turn five is still pretty early, especially if you're in a lower power metagame, not as, you know, combo competitive sort of a situation. You know, 75%, 80%, maybe even up to 85%. Like, what are we doing? You know, I mean, Mana Rocks are always good. You know, more mana is better as long as you have cards in your hand. So uh, that makes Tiana a 3-5. Ha-ha. Take that. And we'll move to turn six. Untap. Draw. Ever found the mana rocks. Let's see. All right, so what do we want to do here? Probably. All right, so the game plan looks like it's becoming something to the effect of play more mana rocks so that in you know one of these upcoming turns, we can fire off this three dreams here to at least get the, um, what do you call it, splinter twin. And then something else that might help us just dig, dig, dig more. Some kind of an aura that draws us cards. Meanwhile, we want to hold up enough mana every turn that we can play some sort of a control effect. I'm looking at this Chaos Warp. Um, just like the, the best, one of the two best targeted removal spells in Commander. Although Assassin's Trophy now maybe edges out both this and Beast Within. I digress. Let me see. So we're definitely going to play... At least one of these mana rocks. Everflowing Chalice makes the sequencing a little bit complicated because we're in a position where we could put three... Uh, we could kick it three times, put three counters on it. But, do I mean, is that, and that would leave us with four mana for a Chaos Warp. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to say that's what we're doing. One, two, three. I'm going to kick this three times. And, you know, it's, 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 a, it's not the most conservative line because artifacts can be dealt with. And so if someone's trying to, you know, have some critical turn where we don't have the mana available. But I, mean, I also don't think that most opponents are going to assess us as being the most likely to have the, you know, removal effect that disrupts whatever sort of critical turn they're trying to take. So, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah I'll, I'll say uh, three counters on the Everflowing Chalice taps for three mana. And then, you know, we'll move to, we'll pass turn, right? And then during someone's turn, we'll go ahead and Chaos Warp something that... Uh, Looks like it could be a problem. Go to our turn seven. Untap. 
We will draw Enlightened Tutor. Okay, okay, that hits an artifact or an enchantment. The problem here is we still don't have a way to fetch up the Zealous Conscript, right? Tiana's Zealot um, is not immediately gettable. Uh, what do we do? So we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mana. That's a lot of mana. Well, the first thing I think we're gonna do is just drop that Boros Signet. Then that leaves us with nine mana, which I mean, definitely enough to you know, use that Enlightened Tutor. I think. I mean, we could. Uh, yeah, I think we definitely have to do three dreams. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're gonna get that three dreams, and I'll resolve that in a minute. We'll also probably wind up Oblivion ringing something. Okay, we'll probably do that. And then we'll cast an Enlightened Tutor at the end of the turn before ours. So we'll have, we'll have to res I did. This is how I would probably... Well, I wouldn't shortcut it quite like this in a real game because I have to resolve the tutors individually. But I do love utilizing little shortcuts when I'm playing with you know a, a playgroup that I trust of friends. And just you know saying, hey, I'll resolve this tutor in a minute, but first I'll finish my turn and then pass turn and then resolve the tutor to save everyone a little bit of time if you haven't started thinking about little gameplay optimization strategies like that. And you'll start doing it. You know, Start figuring that out. You just let that and board management is kind of the minutia that makes the experience of playing... You know, as you get better and better and more experience, just more, even more streamlined and elegant. I don't know. I just, I love this game, guys. I love this game. So, all right. All right. So, what are we doing? Okay. Three dreams. The first dream. Where are the, <laughs> where are the cards I can even target? Okay. So, the first dream is Splinter Twin. Okay. Then, probably Sage's Reverie to draw cards. All right. We want to draw cards. And is there any other aura that draws us? multiple cards. I don't know that there is. I'm going to go ahead and just cycle through all these. Well, so Compassion Standard, <laughs> turn after turn after turn, can grind out um, some card drawing value. Let's go ahead and snag it. No reason not to. We will put these into our hand. We will shuffle our library. Oh, okay. So that is resolved. And then, then we'll resolve the Enlightened Tutor. Uh, so one more time, FNF3. This will allow us to grab an artifact, though, which... I still don't think there's a way to use an artifact to immediately search up zealous conscripts, but there are artifacts, like the Sword of Fire and Ice, perhaps, that can help us draw, 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 draw. Um, the Immortal Sun is not a bad option either. We could also just get a regular old enchantment, like um, <laughs> Pursuit of Knowledge is a weird card. I... I I like it a lot. It's quirky. It's a quirky card. I don't know that I'd play it in like a deck that's trying to be as competitive as possible because you have to skip drawing cards, and if you do that a few times and then it gets dealt with before you get to draw the seven, then you've just really, really whiffed in a big way. But uh, w w when this does pop off, it's it's impressive anyway. It's a cute play that your playgroup might go, ah, I see you. That's cool. They might they might approve of it. They might appreciate it. But I, I yeah, I think for this toot, I'm going to. Uh, yeah, well, so Mind's Eye also draws a buttload of cards for people, but mm, 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 this would be just three mana total to start immediately getting value, and it kind of contributes to, I mean, we're not adding any power to Tiana for the beats, but, oh, man, oh, okay, all right, Immortal Sun, final answer, we're putting that in our hand, I mean, we will draw it for turn, I should say, it's on top of our library, and untap everything, we just drew that already, main phase, Look at this. We got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 mana, which the Immortal Sun makes the sequencing a little bit weird because then everything costs one less, so we could use six mana, and then but then this doesn't cost one less because it doesn't have any generic mana in its cost. So 6, uh, 7, 8, 9, not the worst, although we would probably want to play the Compassion Standard. That's 10 mana, and I said we have 11 available. Doesn't leave any... Wiggle room up, but that does start drawing us cards. Okay, all right, so what we're going to do, final answer is one, two, three, four, five, six. Drop that immortal sun. No more planeswalkers, all right? <laughs> uh, then for one, uh, play a Compassion Standard. Uh, enchant Tiana. Uh, let's see, yeah, attach to Tiana, and that's going to make her a four, six, right? Yeah, uh, no, yeah, yes, four, six. I can add. Then... Everything costs one less, so we'll go ahead and say for one, two, three, Sage's Reverie. Have this come in and enchant. We'll attach it to Tiana. She's going to get 
plus three, plus three, and then we'll draw three cards. So that's going to make her a seven, nine. So, okay, yeah, those beats are getting real now. She's in three-shot territory, and then we draw three cards. Here we go. One, two, three. Ah, oh, there's the Zealous Conscripts. Oh, things are popping off. We're going to start combat. We're going to swing for seven. We're going to end our turn. We're going to move to turn eight right now. Untap everything. Draw. Uh, inspiring Vantage, which is a bad land to draw right now. <laughs> we like that in our opening hand, not so much right now. But let's see, let's just make sure we need um, nine mana. We have nine mana, right? We had nine mana last turn, and we actually only need uh, seven mana because the Immortal Sun makes everything cheaper. So, I mean, you know, obviously you want to duck and weave a little bit. You want to see what sort of mana your opponents have up uh, before you try to combo off. But, you know, if not this turn, maybe next, you know, if, if we need to drop the Grasp of Fate this turn and then wait until turn nine or something to combo off, you know, ramp a little bit, play the Dreamstone Heater and try to draw more cards. Like, we have the tools we need. And with Compassion Standard, we can get a little loop going on where we draw multiple cards per turn off of that if this is not the right turn to combo off. But this might be the right turn to combo off. And to do that, we would, uh, for four mana, one, two, yeah, well, no, we'd probably go uh, one, two, and then red, and then just leave two floating after that. Uh, drop a Splinter Twin onto Tiana. Hope that she doesn't get removed in response. That would be awkward. I'm not going to draw an arrow. I'm just going to attach it. That's what we want to do. And that makes her plus one. It gives her plus one, plus one, but not that it really matters. Then two mana floating. Um, oh, and I already paid one more than I needed to. So three mana floating for five. Uh, but actually, it's only four because Zealous also only costs four because I remember how the Immortal Sun works. And then, you know, we make infinite of the Zealous Conscripts and, uh, you know, it looks something like this. Uh, there they all are. And then we swing with, our, with the whole everything. We just, we're just going to hold. Okay, I, I can't. i uh, trying to command A there. But, uh, yeah, it looks something like that. Yeah, blah, ha, ha, dead. You're dead. You've been Wombo Storm. Ha, ha. And, well, the opponent has been Wombo Storm, but you have also... Uh, ben Wombo Storm just now. That's how the deck works. That's the Wombo Stormy build that I've put together. Tiana Ship's Caretaker trying to help out Ham. Trying to turn Ham into bacon. Baby, yeah, remember, the real game is the meta game. The real win condition is having the most fun. So try to do that and be, be kind to the people that you play with, okay? Be welcoming. Embrace them with open arms. Support the people who love Commander enough to make content about it and provide feedback. G give them constructive feedback. Like, please. But also be nice about it because I'm just a I'm a person and I this me I'm just trying to get better at Commander while also having some fun making some videos and if you don't have anything nice to say about it then just don't say anything and just don't watch them again. Okay, I what, what do we call your mother's also? She she could really you know she did can't hear from you probably.